Barbecue, a daily program that delves into the latest and most significant economic stories. From stock markets to currency news, Business Review covers the most up-to-date stories in the global financial world. The United Nations chief called for fair economic systems and urged that a future vaccine for the new coronavirus should be available to everyone everywhere. Speaking in a pre-recorded message, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres told a virtual conference organized by the International AIDS Society that the recovery from the new pandemic should be based on economic and social justice. He said a future vaccine against the virus should be a people's vaccine. The United States has poured billions of dollars into vaccine efforts at Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, Novavax and AstraZeneca. J&J has said it's aiming for 1 billion doses. Pfizer and BioNTech are also pursuing a vaccine and have said they aim to have 1.2 billion doses by the end of 2021. Speaking during the conference, philanthropist Bill Gates echoed Guterres's call, saying vaccines should not only go to those who could afford them. Gates said if we just let drugs and vaccines go to the highest bidders instead of to the people and the places where they're needed most, we will have a longer, more unjust, deadlier pandemic. He added the pandemic has also disrupted global supply chains for treatments for other diseases, including AIDS. This, he argued, could limit access to medicines for hundreds of thousands around the world. People in Mexico City were taking tentative steps to return to normalcy even as the country posted a new daily record of number of coronavirus cases. People browsed clothing racks and even ate at restaurants in a mall in the sprawling megalopolis. For signs of the pandemic remained evident with shoppers wearing face masks and employees checking their temperatures. Mexico's capital began its reopening process on June 12, when Mayor Claudia Sheinbaum announced a phased approach to lifting restrictions. The mayor said lockdown measures could be reimposed depending on the impact of the reopening in hospitals and infection rates. Mexico continued to post a fresh record for new coronavirus cases reported on a single day, with over 7,280 cases, bringing its overall tally of infections to 282,283. According to the Health Ministry data, the country also recorded 730 additional fatalities bringing its overall death toll to 33,526. Bulgaria and Croatia have been accepted into the ERM2 mechanism, which is a mandatory stage for joining the euro and beginning the currency bloc's first expansion in half a decade. Following the approval from Eurozone finance ministers and European Central Bank officials, the two Eastern European nations will also join the bloc's banking union. The two nations must spend at least two years in ERM2 before starting the practical preparations to join the euro, a process that takes roughly another year, making 2023 the earliest for their membership. Joining the euro would be a particular breakthrough for Bulgaria, which joined the EU in 2007 and has struggled against concerns about organized crime and its relative poverty. It has the lowest per capita economic output of the bloc. For Croatia, which joined in 2013, it represents a means to cement its economic gains and stability since the breakup of the former Yugoslavia in the 1990s. Already, many Croatians save in euros and the country is also seeking to join the bloc's passport-free Schengen travel zone. During the minimum two years of ERM2, the two nations need to pursue sound economic policies, meet membership criteria and have a stable exchange rate. European Council President Charles Michel offered concessions to countries across the EU in a plan for EU's long-term budget and economic recovery plan, hoping to bridge differences between national leaders when they meet next week. Michel, who will chair the first face-to-face -face meeting of European Union leaders since coronavirus lockdowns were lifted, proposed a smaller 2021 to 2027 budget in a bid to make a mass economic stimulus more palatable to thrifty northern countries. 
He proposed a long-term EU budget of 1.074 trillion euros, down from the European Commission's suggested 1.094 trillion and a recovery fund of 750 billion euros for pandemic-hammered economies, with two-thirds in grants and a third in loans. The COVID-19 pandemic is the latest big challenge for the 27-nation EU after it struggled with a debt crisis a decade ago, chaotic mass migration and then the trauma of Brexit. Michel said a new Brexit adjustment reserve of 5 billion euros was needed as regions and industries will face disruptions from 2021, whether there is a new relationship deal with Britain or not. The proposal for the seven-year budget is known in Brussels jargon as the negotiating box, a complex set of numbers covering spending on areas from support for agriculture to regional development to research and scholarships. This is the starting point for negotiations between the 27 national leaders when they meet on July 17th and 18th. The employment situation in the United States remains grim during the COVID pandemic as initial week unemployment claims in the country have surpassed 1 million for 16 straight weeks. The U.S. State Department dip reported in its weekly claims report that a total of 1.314 million new unemployment claims were filed last week. The pandemic has had a huge impact on the U.S. labor market. As the American economy reopened, the labor market has gradually recovered since May. Still, the new weekly jobless claims in the country have remained between 1 and 2 million since the end of May. In the third week of June, the total number of people receiving unemployment benefits in the U.S. hit a record of 32.9 million. Although the number of initial weekly jobless claims reduced by 99,000 last week compared with the week before, it may be because the reception of jobless applications was suspended due to the Independence Day. According to data issued by U.S. Department of Labor on July the 2nd, the unemployment rate of the country in June was about 11.1 percent, still in a high level in history. A quarterly survey conducted jointly by the U.S. Federal Reserve and Duke University showed that more than 500 corporate finance executives interviewed said they were concerned about continued weak demand for products and expected the pace of job recovery to slow for the rest of the year. For the job market, the rebounding of coronavirus cases in the U.S. also added uncertainty to future trends. A side effect of Lebanon's financial meltdown, fuel shortages have worsened existing power cuts, piling further hardship on Lebanese struggling with job losses, soaring prices, hunger and leaving part of Beirut in the dark. Beirut resident Samira Hanna has been spending a lot of time in the dark. Her old Beirut apartment gets less than two hours of electricity a day. And with Lebanon's economy in ruins, the grandmother can barely afford candles let alone a private generator. Parts of the capital Beirut have just been getting few hours of electricity a day in the summer heat. The energy ministry Raymond Gajar has cited stockpiling as one of many reasons behind the shortages, with people buying subsidized fuel as a hedge against inflation. Gajar said ships carrying fuel started arriving this week and promised a gradual return to normal, although across Lebanon, normal has meant daily power cuts of some kind. Private generator suppliers who have long filled the supply gap left by patchy state provision have also been rationing fuel and many homes can no longer pay fees. Even hospitals have not been spared. The main Beirut public hospital treating coronavirus cases had to close some operating rooms and turn off air conditioning in its hallways, local media reported, and without energy for switchboards, Mobile phone coverage was cut in parts of the country. Lebanon's power sector, at the heart of the crisis, leads up to $2 billion from public funds every year, while failing to supply enough electricity. The blackouts have stalked resentment towards political leaders who publicly wrangle over how to repair the sector while power cuts get worse.
has been Business Review, your daily source for the most critical stories in the financial world. Tune in next time for the latest financial news impacting the world economy.